Is it alternative and disputes an interesting one? So it'd be really good to get you guys' views on this with all your experience. Um, deposit placement insurance specifically has gained a lot of traction this year, uh, but some agents are understandably apprehensive. It's a new product. Um, but what are the benefits and risks you guys see of offering this product? So, yeah, I mean, as it just, it's, it's more luck than judgment. Obviously, we've launched our own OM, OME uh, product for deposit replacement, which the tenant is paying monthly. And we look at the tenant journey. Uh, you know, uh, I think that uh, at the end of the day, it all comes down to the landlord. Does the landlord agree with the te the agent's proposal, the tenant's proposals, to take a no de uh, deposit replacement? Okay. Some landlords will, but some landlords think, you know what? I want the money in the bank. Albeit, I used to charge eight weeks rent or two months rent. Now it's only five weeks. Okay. And then there could be an argument that actually. Can the tenant afford to pay the deposit? You know, is that why paying a bit? So there is a question of affordability, and I think that that is a landlord, and maybe you're, maybe the older school landlords. So the agents have to persuade uh, the landlords to be able to do it. I think that there is definitely a market for it where there's rents high. A lot of build-to-rent operators we work for some are really seeing a lot of traction, and obviously having longer-term tenancies makes sense. Uh, if anyone's going to be able to do it and do it correctly, uh, that's why we've entered the market because we've been insurance brokers since 1996 and then obviously in 2007 my deposits with adjudications as well. So there's definitely room in the market and there's definitely take up and of course agents want to be able to get commissions but agents need to be able to make sure they're selling it correctly. What we don't want to have is another PPI scandal. Definitely not. Anything to add Susie? Um, I just wanted to add something very quickly, actually. Um, from a, from an end of tenancy deposit dispute, it actually makes no difference. When I'm educating everybody, I say it doesn't matter which product you have, you have to have the evidence to be able to resolve and negotiate with any deductions at the end or any claim you want to make against it. I think w what's being seen, though, um, is a bit of a concern for me is how much agents are attempting to resolve issues with tenants rather than just making a claim against the product on behalf of the landlord. Mm -hmm. So I think the really exciting thing for me about OHM is that it's quite tenant focused and it gives us a huge opportunity to open up all our education to tenants. So that for me is a really exciting thing because my, my focus is education and I think the more we can educate, the more people can understand, the more help they can have with dealing with any issues during and at the end of the tenancy, for me, that can only be a win-win. And the tenant is a customer. That's my big thing, yeah. yeah. It's changed the focus of the, you know, it's the not statement. business consumer, it's, it's the customer. No, 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 no tenant, no landlord, no landlord, no letting agent. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, and you mentioned earlier, Paul, um, a point about, you know, making sure that you are, is the, the, the hardest sell on this is the landlord. Have you got any kind of advice on what the key benefits to them would be as well, an agent? Yeah, no, no, that's, that's a really good question, Lauren. I think you need to understand your landlord, what type of landlord you've got, and what portfolio, where's the property, okay? What type of tenant is obviously how you profile that tenant, what type of job they're going to do, what's the work mm. placement, and yeah. actually, what's the, you know, why is that being put forward? It's, you have to explain the benefits of the product, okay? And obviously, if the product and the cover is obviously more than the five weeks cap and how how it's sold and understanding the terms of the policy you need to explain it to landlord because everything's now about transparency and actually if you're selling a new product to the landlord you need to be totally transparent because one one bit of advice i always say my years of training letting agents going to their offices and, and, and doing those talks is you have to retain and keep the landlord for the life of them being a landlord not the tenancy you know, the days of the negotiators just wanting to do a deal and signing up an AST for six or 12 months is the bigger, broader picture. Mm, absolutely. Um, Susie, just to come back to what you were saying as well about um, handling the end of the tenancy, have you got any other advice for how agents should handle this in addition to kind of making the claim a bit sooner? Um, I think... I think the point of... Um, I, I think for me, when I'm dealing with agents and landlords and end of tenancy disputes is actually understanding that negotiating and um, having the right evidence and being prepared for negotiation is really key so my focus is not on how to how to 
how an adjudicator necessarily will work, but how you can how you can deal with your tenant on a much softer, kinder, customer-like um, basis. Well, presumably, it's, it's, man it's managing the tenant's expectations well, as well as the, the landlord. landlord. Yeah, I but it's, it's both. It's a bit of, yeah, exactly. It's, it's yeah. huge mm -hmm. for managing the landlord's expectations. The fact that the landlord still, on on so many levels, as so many agents will agree, landlords think they can take whatever they want from the deposit that it's their money. Yes. And it's still, and, 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 it, and, and you're doing loads of courses up and down the country trying to educate, not just letting agents and landlords, but you know, you talk about betterment. They think a carpet, you know, has last about five years. They've got a carpet of 10 years. And they think they should get the, to the total amount back they yeah, paid they 10 still, years ago. Yeah, the mindset yeah. is changing the, it's changing the mindset yeah. and getting the tenants to understand that crayons on walls are not wear and tear. Aren't they? Oh, I better, I better stop writing on the wall. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Thank you both for that.